This is part 14 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss calling ASP.NET Web API servers in a cross domain using jQuery Ajax. As far as browsers are concerned, there's a concept called same origin policy. First, let's understand what is meant by same origin policy. Browsers allow a web page to make Ajax requests only within the same domain. Browser security prevents a web page from making Ajax requests to another domain. This is called same origin policy. So if you look at these two URLs right here, they have got same origin because notice both of them are using the HTTP protocol. They are from the same domain localhost and they also have the same port number 1234. Whereas if you look at these two URLs, they've got different origins because they have different port numbers. The first one is using port number 1234, whereas the second one is using 5678. These two URLs right here also have different origins because they have got different domains. The first one has got .com, whereas the second one has got .net. And these two URLs right here also have different origins because they have got different security schemes. The first one is using HTTPS, whereas the second one is using HTTP. Now let's prove that browsers doesn't allow cross-domain AJAX requests. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Now to our solution, let's add another project. So I'm going to right click on the solution, add a new project and let's add ASP.NET Web Application. Let's call this Client Application. Click OK. And let's add Web Forms Application. Let's click OK. This is going to take a few seconds to create the project. Project created. To this project, let's add an HTML page. Let's leave the default name. Now we want to write Ajax code here to call our ASP.NET Web API service. Now this HTML page is present in a different project. In our previous video, we have created this employees.html and within this page we have Ajax code which calls the Web API service. Now the page and the Web API service, they are present in the same project. So the domain is the same. So the Ajax call worked without any problem. Now let's copy this HTML and jQuery code and paste it within our HTML page one dot HTML. This page is present in a different project. Now one thing that we need to change here is the URL for our ASP.NET Web API service. Now if you look at employees.html we are using relative URL. Now this relative URL will work in this case because both the page and the ASP.NET Web API service, they are present in the same project. But if you look at where, you know, the complete URL for where the Web API service is hosted, it's right here, localhost colon a port number for slash API for slash employees. Now we can get to the employees page using the same port number. Okay. So this is the URL where we have our Web API service hosted. So within our HTML page one dot HTML, we have to use that full URL. So let's give our solution a build. Build succeeded. Now let's view this HTML page in the browser. Look at the port number where we have this HTML page hosted. It is 6293. And look at the port number where we have our Web API service hosted. It is 23258. So we have got two different port numbers here. That means we have got two different origins. So the Ajax request that we are issuing from this HTML page is a cross-domain Ajax request. Remember, browser security prevents cross-domain Ajax request for security reasons. Let's actually prove that. Let's click this Get All Employees button. Look at that. We don't see employees data. Now let's launch browser developer tools and see if we have got any errors. Notice the error that we have got. XML HTTP request cannot load this URL. So this URL is where we have our ASP.NET Web API service hosted. And it says no access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource origin, so this is the origin from where we have issued the Ajax request, is therefore not allowed access. So this proves that 
browser security prevents cross-domain AJAX requests. There are two ways to get around this problem using JSONP. JSONP stands for JSON with padding or enabling cores, cross origin resource sharing. In this video, we'll discuss how to issue cross domain AJAX requests using JSONP, and in our next video, we'll discuss enabling cores. So, what is JSONP? JSONP stands for JSON with padding. All JSONP does is wraps the data in a function. So, here we have regular JSON data. And here is the JSON formatted data. Notice all we are doing here is wrapping the JSON data in a JavaScript function. The name of the function here is callback function. Now, web browsers allow JavaScript to be consumed from a different domain. Since in this case, JSON data is wrapped in a JavaScript function, this can be consumed by a web page that is present in a cross domain. Now, Let's see how to make our ASP.NET Web API service return JSONP formatted data. The support for JSONP format is present in a different NuGet package. Let's first install that package. Let's do that using the NuGet Package Manager console vendor. So let's click on Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager console, and within the Package Manager console, let's execute this command, install package, and the name of the package that we want to install is this web api contrib dot formatting dot jsonp so this is going to install this nuget package as well as any other dependencies the package is successfully installed now let's go to web api config dot cs and within the register method let's create a variable let's call this jsonp formatter equals let's create a new instance of jsonp media type formatter class this class is present in a different namespace and that is web api contrib.formatting.jsonp so let's use that using declaration and to the constructor of this class let's pass json formatter and to get JSON formatter, we use the config object that is coming into this function as a parameter. So config dot formatters dot JSON formatter. And then let's inject this JSON P formatters into the formatters collection of the config object. So config dot formatters dot insert and let's insert this as the first formatter. So at index position 0, we want to insert JSONP formatter. And then the final step is within our HTML page 1.html. Now the data type that we are going to get back is JSONP. So let's set that to JSONP. Let's also do the same thing in employees.html. Let's change the data type to JSONP. Now let's give our solution a build build succeeded. Now let's view this HTML page 1.html in the browser. At the moment, our web API service is returning JSONP formatted data, so we shouldn't have any problem calling the web API service using jQuery Ajax. Let's try it from employees.html page. Employees.html is present in the same project where we have our web API service. Even this works as expected. Finally, let's test our Web API service using Fiddler. This is the URI where we have our Web API service hosted. Let's execute this GET request. Notice we get status code 500, internal server error. And if you look at the actual error message, it says a callback parameter was not provided in the request URI. Remember, all JSONP does is wraps the data in a function. Now we need to specify the name for that function using this query string parameter callback. Now the function name that we are specifying here is ABC. Let's execute this request completed. And if you look at what we have got back, notice the JSON data is now wrapped in a function called ABC. Now if you want just JSON data instead of JSONP formatted data, then set accept header to application forward slash json and remove 
this callback query string. Now when we execute this request, notice we get just raw JSON instead of JSONP formatted data. Now if you set the accept header to application for slash JavaScript and then if you include the callback parameter and then let's say for example the function name is my callback. In this case also we are getting JSONP formatted data. Look at that the JSON data is wrapped in a function named my callback. Thank you for listening and have a great day.